Good afternoon, everyone. Wow, that's very, very good. <laughs> I'm not your teacher, okay? You don't have to reply back like that. Uh, really good to see everyone here. Welcome to um, this special Saturday afternoon pre-anniversary uh, service. Isn't it exciting that we're going to be celebrating 25 years this coming week? Are you guys excited? Yes, that's it. Who's not excited? Anyone? No, okay. I was going to send you out of here. Uh, wonderful to have the, the kids with us as well. Um, wonderful to have people here from Singapore as well. So can I do the, the awkward thing and ask those, just maybe shove hands, those that are from Singapore, put up your hands. Wow, well done. Those that are from Christmas Island, put up your hands. Yeah. That was just random. That was just random. No reason at all. But look, really a warm welcome to everyone here. Um, it's really a, a special occasion. Um, let's come before the, the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you that we can be in your presence once again this afternoon. Lord, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy, your blessings and your love that you've poured out upon Bethel and each member here at Bethel. Lord, we just thank you that um, you have seen us through 25 years. Lord, we just want to worship you again. We want to praise you. Um, we want to feel your presence, Lord, this, this afternoon. Lord, bless uh, this worship service, we ask, and also the full week of celebrations. May your name truly be honored this week. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, um, to start us off, uh, we have a video presentation. So I'm going to roll this video, and then we'll get into the service. Well, that was a wonderful uh, reflection there and uh, a beautiful video, lots of good memories. You know, as we start this worship service and even as we go through it, I wonder if you guys can do us a favor and, you know, as we're going through it, just think about your reasons for wanting to thank God and praise the Lord, you know, both in your life personally, but also from a church perspective as well. So, I think that would be a great thing, because today, um, we just want to capture that spirit, that spirit of thankfulness, that spirit of praise toward the Lord, because indeed, there is so much to be thankful for. Um, you know, we want to thank God for all that He's done in the midst of, of Bethel. You know, I, I remember um, first coming to our old church building over at Mint Street. Some of you might, might remember. Um, you know, everything there in Min Street was a little bit smaller. Even I was a little bit smaller back then. You know, the kitchen was a little bit smaller. The sanctuary was a little bit smaller. The meeting rooms were a bit smaller. You know, the only thing that was bigger um, in that building was the basketball ring. For some reason, it was like 11 foot um, instead of the usual 10 foot, which made it very awkward to get shots in. But you know, we thank God that we can be here to worship in this wonderful building, and we just thank God that we can be here to celebrate um, the 25th anniversary of our church. Well, I'm going to introduce to you a, a little concept. It's not, not, not huge, it's just a little thing that I'm going to do to try and draw our attention to things to be thankful for um, to the Lord. And this is what I call, it's a little segment that I call Bethel Fun Facts. All right, so everyone out there can play, um, especially you kids. So it's just a, a little quiz, not, not a huge competition, okay? If, if you get the answer right, you can just feel good about yourself. That's about it. <laughs> no prizes. So the first, the first question, there's only one question, right, per, per, per uh, song. Okay, is this, can I read this? <clears throat> on a usual Sunday, okay, on a usual Sunday, normal Sunday, where, say, let's say chicken rice is on the menu. I know we can, I know we can imagine this because we've had it. Um, how many chickens would have to give their lives for us? Just on a usual Sunday. 
okay? Not, not, a, not, a, you know, not an anniversary Sunday, it's just a usual Sunday. All right, so next, next slide, I don't have the clicker. So, so it can be either A, 10, or it can be B, 50, or C, 25, or D, 2 million. <laughs> okay, so kids, what do you think, kids? Uh, Isla? C is 25. Anyone got anything? You sure about that answer? You want to lock it in? <laughs> Call a friend. Call a friend. Uh, Gideon. B, 50. I think you guys are in the zone. Right? So either of you, are, one's going to win, one's going to lose. <laughs> but it's not about winning or losing, right? Okay, so the, so the answer, hit the answer. It's 25. C, well done. Well done, Isla. Special prize for you. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Well done. Look, you know, 25, I mean, that's kind of what 25 chickens looks like, right? I counted those. Um, I actually thought it'd be more, to be honest, and it's just, it seems strange. It's coincidental. It's our 25th anniversary. It's like every, every year we go up one chicken. <laughs> next year it's going to be 26. So we'll monitor this. I'll put this up next year. We'll see how we go. You know, but I wanted to put that up to have a bit of a laugh, but also just to draw our attention to something that I'm thankful for, which of course is the kitchen ministry at, at Bethel. You know, there's so much work that goes on in, in the kitchen ministry, and it's just a monster of an effort. Um, you know, for special events, it's an even bigger effort, and the team behind the scenes works tire tirelessly um, for this congregation and gives so much, you know, the congregation gives generously to the work as well. But another aspect that the kitchen ministry does is it fosters this wonderful fellowship among the brethren, and it gives us that chance to, you know, fellowship after the worship service. And as someone wise once said, you know, a family that eats together stays together. You know, and I just don't want to take these sort of things for granted, so I'm thankful for, for the kitchen ministry and what they do in our midst. So that's, that's me, right? But what about you guys? Okay, what about you guys out in the congregation here? What are you guys thankful for? So I'm going to now just pop out to you, right? And I'm going to come and ask a couple of people some questions about what you are thankful for. For both, maybe it could be personally or it could be about the church and Bethel. All right, we, would, we just want to capture this. We want to capture all the things that we're thankful for today. So you ready? I'm coming out. Here we go. All right, here we go. So I want to get good representation here. So, you know, someone, someone younger, someone middle-aged, and someone experienced. <laughs> okay, so can I, can I get a volunteer from the, the, from the young crowd? What are you thankful for 25 years? Well, you haven't lived 25 years, but what are you thankful for? <laughs> All right, someone? Volunteers? No volunteers? Anyone? On the spot? On the spot? No? Isla? Anything? No? No? Jonathan, being pointed to. <laughs> All right, Jonathan, tell us one thing. It could be anything. It could be very simple. All the teachers that teach us in the children's ministry. And Pastor Chris. Well done, well done. Well done, Jonathan. That was great. That was great. And uh, well said. And I, I, he's sitting right in front of you, so it was a good reminder. <laughs> but, uh, but that was great. And, and we do thank God for the teachers, um, especially the ones that teach the kids and the new generation. Very, very important. So I'm coming to the middle section here. Uh, can I get a volunteer? Anyone? It's, this is great. I mean, you, your chance to really express to everyone here, you know, what you're thankful for. Auntie Kwok. Well, I'm thankful that we're still... Um it's just the beginning 25 years. We've got many more years to look forward to, to see our children growing up for the next generation. That's my thankfulness for their, their love for God at this point in time. I like that. Thank you. The new generation is very, very important. All right, I'm going to come to, to some more, uh, more experienced people. Uh, maybe, maybe Bev over here. Would you like to say a couple of words? And, and you've been coming here for a little while now. I'd like to thank the Lord for the love and care that's shown here from the young ones 
to those not quite our age, but the love and care has been wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, Bev. Round of applause. All right. That's it. I mean, there, there really is a lot to be thankful for, and, you know, and Bev's comments, I, I resonate with that. The love and care that's, that's here at, at Bethel is, is something to be really thankful for and appreciate. Well, our first, uh, first song and hymn today is, is in your VIPs, but projected up, and it's called God's Wonderful People. You know, and this is a wonderful, catchy type uh, song. It just talks about how great it is to be amongst God's people, you know. And it says, I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. I wonder if you guys feel that excitement as well when you come to church and you get to fellowship with your brethren here um, at Bethel. I'm going to try and do the, the clap thing, Aldine. You know the clap thing? Yeah. You guys know the clap thing for this, uh, this song? All right, so, you know, in, as, as, as it goes on, and it says, you know, I like the thrill when I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people, and then in the chorus, you've got to do a clap, right? You guys got it? I think you'll, you'll, you'll get it as we go on. All right, I'll do my best. All right, let's, let's sing this together. Well, thank you for that. So, another, another fun fact um, is on the screen... When it comes up, yeah, not the chickens. <laughs> All right. All right, this one here is how many people became members of Bethel last Christmas? Okay, I hope I got the answer right as well on this. A is going to be one, B is two. C is five, and D is two million. <laughs> okay, shout out the answer, anyone? Yes, yes, uh, yes, well, let's have a look. Could be two million. Yes, the answer is five. Yes, it is indeed. So that was, that was last Christmas, and I believe we've got another service for um, incoming members coming up this week as well. You know, I, I've, I just put that up because I, I just think that's the most wonderful moment when someone is confirmed into their faith, when they choose to be confirmed into that faith. I just think that's exciting. It's like a start of a new life, you know, a new life with clear direction and, and purpose. You know, but something that I find more amazing than that is that after, when years go by, you know, and, and you've faced life's challenges and you've overcome difficulties and then you stop and you ponder and then you realize how God has been there and how he has strengthened you, how he has kept you and been there all the way through it. And then you look back and you just stand amazed at God's presence. You know, for me, it's, it's really clear that God has been there throughout the past 25 years for Bethel. He has been there. You know, and I like what the psalmist says in Psalm 98, and I do have it up on the slide, guys. In Psalm 98, verse 1, the psalmist says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. And then in verse 3, he says, He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. You know, one reason that I uh, thank God for is that he remembers his mercy and his faithfulness to his people. And when we reflect on the past 25 years, indeed, we can say that God has been faithful and he has been merciful. You know, God works differently to how we work. You know, we often work in the moment. Um, we stress in, in, in moments. But for God, you know... And for us, when we sometimes pause and we take a step back and we have a think about it, we can sometimes just capture that amazing hand of God in our lives. You know, I like, uh, I like this moment as well. Um, for me, the, the next picture, if you click on, is one of those moments. 
No, 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 no. Sorry, is there is there a picture right at the end? Yeah, this one here, right. And and you saw this in some of the the opening video as well. So for me, this this is one of those times when I've I've looked at it and I was there. My kids were involved, and I've just had a stop and I've had a think and gone, wow, you know, God's blessings really are there. Um, not not just because I guess it's my kids, but I look at the the number of children. Um, I think about, you know, for those of you that were either in the concert or you were the teachers teaching the kids um, or you were one of the parents, I mean, you know how much effort um, everyone put into putting this concert together for the children. And I stopped and I think, wow, you know, our children are, are serving God and that is our next generation up there. And that's something for me to thank God for as well. Well, our next hymn speaks about how God leads us all the way. And it's hymn number 460. Let me just turn to that. You know, I thought this was a a really appropriate hymn as as we look back at 25 years. You know, can we say this, that our Savior has led us all the way? And I like it, you know, I do like it when it asks these rhetorical questions and it says, What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy? Through, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. And indeed, Jesus and our Lord does everything well in our midst. Well, can I ask you all to take up this hymn with me, number 460, All the Way My Saviour Leads. Okay, last fun fact uh, for today is this, when it goes up. I'm putting pressure on the AV team. Okay, no, not that one. Next. This one here, okay. So, this is a calculation, um, and the question is this. How many, approximately, okay, give or take, I reckon I'm accurate, give or take about 30, okay? How many, approximately, Sunday worship pulpit messages, pulpit messages, has Pastor Chris preached since entering the full-time ministry here in Perth? And this is why I asked you that question uh, this morning, Pastor Chris. But it wasn't about it. I, I did my own calculations. I didn't want you to go and calculate yourself. So, so the, the, uh, the options here are A, 434, B, 628, C, 842, and D, 2 million. Okay, so, so it's, you know, could be 2 million. Um, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? I reckon this is probably the trickiest one. I've got a very extensive financial model, not my financial model, calculation model on this. So it's whatever's on my computer back home is the answer. Um, kids? B or C? B or C? Anyone's A? Anyone for D? Okay. All right. Ready? Okay. Here's the answer. B, 628. Now, that's only for the Sunday messages, right? And I have discounted for the times when you're away, Pastor Chris, so there is, you know, there's a factor in there. But, you know, if you think about all the other ministries, and it got too complicated to calculate that, you've got to times it by approximately four, okay? So if you just think about the number of messages... Um, and that's since January 2007, is, is since uh, Pastor Chris has been back. So that is a lot of messages. But, you know, my, my reason for putting that up there is just to demonstrate how blessed we are with the precious Word of God being preached to us. You know, these words are spirits and they are life, and they are preached to us in abundance and with no shortage at all. And that's something to really thank God for. You know, in, in recent years, um, my work has taken me uh, traveling quite a bit. Um, 
And I must say, traveling for work is not a glamorous lifestyle at all. You know, when I was younger, I, I used to think that, you know, that's kind of cool, right? You know, get out and about for work and, and travel and even admired, you know, people that had those kind of jobs. But I can tell you after a couple of years of doing it, the novelty wears off quick and it's not fun at all. You know, when you're away from home for work, you're immersed in your work, morning and, and evening. When you have dinner with your colleagues, you know, all you really talk about is work, and eating is kind of secondary, and that's just wrong, right? But what the last two years has taught me is just how much I love and I appreciate um, the house of God, and in particular, this church, Bethel. It's a special place to come, to come into this, this sanctuary of the Lord, to hear his word, and to sing praises to him. You know, when I'm away, I, I just look forward to getting back here, because when I'm here, it's just a special time where I can remove all of life's distractions, and I can focus wholly on the Lord. You know, the definition of, of a sanctuary is a place of refuge. And to me, there is no better place to be when you have the stresses of life, difficulties or challenges, and to be able to come before God to seek Him and to receive His Word. Well, our, our next hymn is uh, the final hymn before I pass over to Pastor Chris, and it's entitled, To God Be the Glory. You know, and as I think about all of these reasons, all of the things that God has done, how He has blessed us, blessed me personally, but blessed Bethel, um, you know, and, and what, what this church has become today, I think this is an appropriate hymn to give God the glory for all of these things. So I'm going to ask you all to rise with me and sing this together, to God be the glory. Please be seated and thank you for your singing and participation as well. Okay, well, thank you, Nick, um, for doing that. If you have this little sheet of paper with you, the first part that we are looking to do as we gather everyone here this uh, afternoon that then followed by a dinner later on is really to do a few things. One, to reflect. Okay, come um, Thursday, our worship service, and then Friday, it's, it's going to move. This week is going to go by very quick, beginning with Monday, our ACM, and then the Thursday, and then Friday, and next thing you know, it's all over. So I thought it would be good for us to just take a moment, given it it's our 25th church anniversary, just take a moment to reflect and uh, Nick has been doing that and in a very creative way, right? And um, recapping all the different things from chicken rice to my messages. 628, I wasn't counting. Anyway, this afternoon you get 629. Add one more. Okay, later on. Now, the next part of it is going to be the choir, and the Lord's blessing doesn't just take one day, two days, even one year or two years to see. Sometimes it takes decades to see what blessings really are. Like a, like a child. Yeah, look at a child. You, you know, parents look at them now when they're, when they're baby, they're okay. When they become oh, your terrible number, oh, the age, let's not brand them. You look at it, what is this blessing? It takes years for them to grow up and then <laughs> you can say maybe, thank God. Right now is just perseverance. So press on, parents, wherever you are. Notice they gathered all the children in front and then they all sit somewhere else. <laughs> right? Yeah, they're very happy. Now look, look at these things here. So same thing. Blessings takes years to see. And so the next part is what we call a reaffirmation, reaffirming, sorry, re reaffirm our calling. What is a church? We are called to be a church. 25 years ago, that calling was heard. 
Now, this is 25 years later. Have we a better understanding what this calling is? And so the choir is going to come and they are going to sing uh, to encourage us, to help us appreciate this part as we reflect the Lord's blessing. What are we doing? We want to reaffirm our calling. Year after year after year. Now, remember, if it's not a calling, in one year, the church will be finished. In 10 years, it may not survive 10 years. If it's your calling, it will continue. That is special. And so we don't take a calling ever for granted. Okay? Well, we're going to have the church choir come on over and, and sing this song for us. Perhaps we could not sing 25 years ago. But today, we reaffirm this calling. We are the church. Good. Thank you, uh, really, choir. Really appreciate that. Okay, we have to... What time's dinner? <clears throat> 6 30, right? 7 o'clock? No, I don't think they can last. <laughs> okay, 6 30. They're very kind. Okay, I don't think we'll go that far. But what we want to take a look at uh, this evening's word. Now, before I do so, just want to welcome those who have come from overseas to be with us at our anniversary. Okay, of course, we know uh, Uncle S.T. and T. Grace, they just they came in this week. Last few days, well, welcome back, right? And all who are from Singapore, welcome. Welcome to Perth uh, from Bethany, and, and we're just glad you're here. I know this is not the full group because 122 will be here, and that is going to be a really challenging thing to see, okay? And um, we're going to see how we can fit uh, into this sanctuary. Those of us here are so used to space, this is going to be awkward. <laughs> In Bethany, you're so used to no space. Here, we're so used to space. So we, we are going to, this is a new experience for quite a, quite a fair few of us. Okay? Well, this... Uh, afternoon, evening time, we're going to take a look at this text over here, right? And in Psalm 103, if you uh, brought your Bible, uh, that you can take a look at it, right? I thought it would be good for us to look at what it means to, right? We talk about celebration of our anniversary, we talk about worship, and one of the special things we're going to have is a worship service, right? And then we sing. So it's good for us to ask ourselves why we do all these things. The danger is we're going to end up doing something repeatedly. Actually, we don't know what we're doing. That is very common, right? We just do it. What are you doing? I don't know. We just do it. It can happen to anyone. It could be even coming to church, going for worship, celebrating anniversaries, going out to hotels, having a nice... Uh, uh, it can become so common. Uh, we don't think about it. And we don't want to do that. We want to ask ourselves why we do what we do. Okay? Now, let's take a look at this text in Psalm 103. Right? Now, it's just 22 verses. Okay? And the word that stands out in the first few verses is the word bless. Now, this is not a reference to us being blessed. And Nick has talked about how Bethel has been blessed, we have been blessed, and indeed we have been blessed. We really have been. There's another way of using this word, bless, and it's not directed to us. Right? It's interesting. It's directed to someone else. Okay? Now, let's take a look at this. Bless the Lord. 
That's interesting. Look how many times this word comes out. All right, kids, you, you have Bibles, you're looking at it. See how many word bless you can find in this particular psalm. How many? Not two million. <clears throat> Just in case. Right? How many? Verse 1, there's one. Are you counting? Two. All right, verse 2, then there's another one, that's three. See how fast you are. How many word bless is there? Right? Do you see that? Verse 20, bless the Lord. Verse 21, bless the Lord. Verse 22, bless the Lord. 22 again, bless the Lord. How many? Seven. Good. Right? Wendy and Fred are paying good money to send their daughter to school and she can count. Well done. <laughs> good. Right? That's their blessing. Right? So, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. The, well, the phrase bless the Lord six times. The word bless comes out seven times. <clears throat> right? Now, the word bless is there. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Okay, and then uh, we, we see it mentioned again and again. Bless His holy name. Actually, very similar. Bless the Lord. Okay, so the word bless here is not a reference to us as in um, directed, we are blessed. But interesting, it is used with reference to God. Now, what does that mean? Seriously, what does that mean? Bless the Lord. Right? See, it's a word we can use and don't know. Don't know what it actually means. When somebody sneezes, ah, chew, what do you say? Ah, exactly. Now, let me ask you why you say it. Exactly. You don't even know. Right? We, it could be so awkward. Yeah. Ah, chew, bless you. What do you mean, bless you? I got a call. People who don't know, why do we say bless you? It's almost automatic. Bless you. Do you know why? Yeah, Jonathan, you know why? Yeah. 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 The priest, the priest will bless you. There was a time where there was a there was a great plague and people died. There was no medication, there was no cure. And so when somebody sneezes, the Pope said, pray for them. Say to them. You know, we say bless you, but the full thing is actually, may God bless you. And so when people sleep, may God bless you with all my heart because you could drop dead tomorrow. It became literally a phrase that was used in England, all over Europe. Of course, the shortened form is bless you. It was said out of sincerity, out of concern because you could die. Today is, hachu, bless you. That's it. It's an automatic reaction. And the danger for us in the church after many years is, bless the Lord, O my soul, with all that is in me, bless His holy name. And you don't even know what it means. That's what we want to take a moment and say, what does it mean to really bless the Lord? Seriously. Okay, well, let's, let's think about this. Right, let's, we got to 6.30 anyway. You're not going anywhere, right? Rose from Singapore flew all the way here anyway. And uh, let's take a look at this. Now, the word bless is an interesting word. What does it mean to bless? Right? What does it really mean? Have you heard of the word eulogy? Ah, what is a eulogy? Right? It, in funerals, where people give a eulogy about a person, and it's usually given by a person who, of course, knows this person, 
who loves this person, respects, and has something special to say about the person. You do not invite your enemy to give the eulogy. <laughs> Nothing good will come out. This person stole my mails. He st always stepped on my garden. Right? Of course not. You're going to have someone who knows this person well, and they are going to speak truths. They are going to speak well. They are going to know something about you. Others may not. Maybe you did something for the community other people don't know about. And they just want to tell you, you know what? This person has done something really special in my life. They're good words. They're words of praise. They're words of commendation. Now, that's the, your general word eulogy. Now, this word has that word eulogy inside it. But it's more than just good words. Okay? This word used in this particular psalm is really incredible. Because to the psalmist, he's trying to find a word that can well express how he feels really grateful to God for all that God is and all that God has done for him and his community. In this case, Israel. Right? Now, to say thank you, when somebody does something for you, you what's the most basic thing to say? Thank you, right, kids? So what, later on, you go out, somebody gives you something. Here, have a, what will you be having? Shepherd's pie, Japanese curry, right? Whatever. Okay, let's see, all, all light up now. <laughs> all right. Okay? Your you basic thing is to say thank you. Right? Now, you go home and you really don't deserve this and your parents brought you a new bike and you just say, oh, by the way, thank you. You may not have a home after this. <laughs> you know, there's got to be something else than just saying thank you. You short of saying, you know what? Like my son wrote me a, a Father's Day letter and he said, you are the best dad in the world. That's called praise. Not flattery, praise. And he's right. <laughs> <laughs> to him, right? Of course, all that is done for him, care for him, you know, all the things till now and more. And he uh, go, just, is just so happy he writes all those words. Between you and iPad, you are better. Yes. <laughs> right? I know how much it means to him. Okay, right, I'm better than the iPad. That's well done. But seriously, see, the idea of that is another level now. Praise. Praise. What's a level higher than praise? This is the word. And it's seldom used. We go as far as praise, and that's pretty good. Somebody does well, somebody does, you know, you're just so happy. You, you cannot just say thank you. You praise the person. That's great. But we seldom go beyond praise. Can we not, after 25 years, go beyond praise? First year, we can give thanks. Fine, you know, thank God for His grace, His mercy. We are here. You know, we... Fifth year... After 10 years, we learn to praise. Praise God. After 25 years, if we're still at thanksgiving and praise, something's wrong. They've got to, if you, the more you see, the more you experience, there's got to be something else. And the word is well chosen. This is later on. David says, bless the Lord. Learn this word. Use it well. And in your own heart, as you think, as you look at, you know, absorb everything, this whole week, experience, may you say, bless the Lord. Now, let's take a look at this. And he says, bless the Lord. Most of the time, when people write, they write to encourage people, and that's good. Right? We want to encourage people, uh, you know, 
come on over. Right? You might want to encourage people to come to church. That's great. You encourage. Good. But what's the best encouragement? You do it. You are an example of what you are encouraged people to do. Right? If you want to encourage people to exercise and you don't exercise, forget about it. Right? You sit, watch TV, eat KFC non-stop, and yeah, I think you should go exercise. It's not going to work. It's going to fall flat. If you really want to encourage anyone to do something, you've got to be a person that does it. Now, this is, this is this person called David. And he says, bless the Lord. Now, this is interesting. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. What is the soul? And most of the time, the soul is a reference to the spirit, right? But not here. The word soul is where the word psychology actually comes from. If you study psychology, what are you studying? Not the spirit, but the mind. The mind. Not just the mind, the organics of the mind, but how the mind is wired into your behavior. So when a person loses their mind, their behavior is strange, isn't it? Right? So if you're behaving weirdly, we might think you've lost your mind. That's where you need to see a psychologist, isn't it? There's no medication to take. You cannot take any medication for your, your mind's gone. And the behavior is strange. Right? Now, the word here is the soul. That's what the soul is. It's not just the invisible part, which it is. But it has to do with your mind. So keep your mind fresh. Keep your mind sound. Keep your mind, you know what? The mind can understand God. And that understanding can affect your behavior. Right? You have a few people can, can come in. One can give thanks. Thank God for a beautiful weather. You're right. The sun is out. Even though it's four degrees, it's like free air con. Most of the people from Singapore will say that. Then you have the local people, person come out and says, why is it so cold? <laughs> it's like winter all over again. And why is the sun so bright? Same weather, two different reactions. All the time. So a person can understand, can appreciate God, can see, can, you know what? Hey, the soul, as it were, you know what? Bless the Lord. Did you, did you find yourself do that each day? Can you say, wow, bless the Lord, oh my. You really mean it. Right? Look, look at some of the things. Uh, he blessed the Lord and he wants to encourage his friends. Right? First, he practiced it and then he encouraged his friends. Now, Then he says, right, all the different people who are there and he says, look, Forget not all his benefits. Who forgive all your iniquities? Now, he's talking about other people now. He's talking about the community now, right? He's making a list here. Forgive all your iniquities, who heal all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfy your mouth with good things, you, your, your, your. He is talking about, look, can we not agree on this? This is why we bless the Lord. Have we not experienced this? Have your sins not been forgiven you? Bless the Lord. Have your diseases, you have found recovery, you have healed well. Bless the Lord. Experience, right? Right? You have experienced loving kindness. 
You have experienced tender mercy, John and Bev. That's what you are saying. I experience love and care here. This is experienced, right? And all of us at Bethel have, have all experienced this, who satisfy your mouth with good things. So we may not experience all this whole list. If you are younger, you may not be concerned for illnesses as much, but for the older person. Like uh, until Lillian will say, you know, I fell down and I fractured my uh, foot, the toe. And for a young person, very fast, they heal. Not for an older person. So if it heals, thank God. Right? John went for an operation and, and it took him months for the eye to, to recover, to heal. Now he has a glass eye and, you know, you can't tell. Thank God. It's personal. It really is personal. And yet, at the same time, something that is personal, that community connects with. You know what? Bless the Lord. This is what the psalm is all about. So it is a call. Let's do this. This is, this is the whole point of gathering all the people. It's sounding a call out, and we want to do that. It's a call to bless the Lord with all our soul. Right? Now we are calling you to do a, you know, calling for, for support too, because we are uh, going over to the West. You know, on, on Thursday, we are just calculating. We're going to have a serious traffic problem, okay? Father's Day, which is last Sunday, we had 170 people. That's almost becoming a regular. But here's the challenge. 122 is going to add on from our friends from Singapore. You, 170 plus 122, where's Isla? Is, well, there we go. Well, we're good, very good. <laughs> Future church accountants. <laughs> 292, not including our guests. That's almost 300. Okay, so please, this is also a call. When we come, all sit snugly, nicely, tightly together. Right, so some of the young people, if you see, you might have to give up your seat. Right, we, we might have to make a few adjustments here. Now, we also talked to Swansea Market and said, look, you don't mind, uh, you're, you're going to close shop at 6 o'clock, but can we use your car park? They said, no problems. Right, uh, as long as you buy our coffee. No, they didn't say that. <laughs> they said, go ahead, use it. Right? But, of course, security-wise, we are not liable and, and so on and so forth. And uh, we understand that. But at least we have a place to park. Now, we are calling upon you as, uh, well, let's, we park over there. Let our guests park in the car park. Okay? Because we know where Bethel is. They may not. <laughs> right? So, let, let's park over there. But, you know, let's get people, organize them. Okay, come over here. Right? We are already having difficulties with our car park. With add-on that many, it is going to be really, really challenging. You know what? Let's do something. See, this is a call. And those who hear the call, understand this in their mind, in their heart, respond to the call. Let's do it. That's, that's what this is. Okay? So, let's be there. We are not coming as guests. We are coming as people who understand these things here. We are people who belong to this place where we call Bethel. And so we're going to ask, go ahead, you, we, you park here, we will uh, park there, and we just do a bit of a walk. That's okay. Okay, but please be careful. But older ones, we're going to arrange traffic marshal that you're going to get dropped off in front. Right? Those who are older, those who need some assistance, we're going to have drop off, we get people to look after you. Let's, let's do this. So Psalm 109, Psalm 103 is not just personal, it's actually people. It's not just my soul, it's you. 
And there is a gratitude how the Lord has kept you. How the Lord has preserved you. Right? How the Lord has turned your life around once upon a time. This was what you were like. The Lord redeemed you, forgive you of your sins, and you are now a changed person. Thank God. Right? Uh, tomorrow we will have uh, two new members added to the church. Hannah and Meite. Right? Take time to read their testimony. How they found faith real. How faith became even more precious to them here. And so they want to say, you know, this is the place. And both of them uh, did not grow up, as it were, in Bethel. But they too can speak of being part of it. Not all of us grew up here. Along the way, the Lord touched our hearts through His Word. Along the way, God became so real. You know why God blessed the way He does? That we may discover the reality of God in life. That's why He does it. That we may discover the reality of God. Now there's another reason why He blessed. That we may learn about God. See, blessings are not just things to possess. Okay, God bless me. Hooray. Thank God. And you move on. We miss it if we do that. Why actually tell people, don't forget it? Recall it. Why? It's not that God needs all your praise. It doesn't. It is for us to learn about God. Now, this is the next part of it. Look what we can learn. And so, through seeing how God blessed and experiencing them personally, we read in verse 6, this is all about who God is. The Lord executes righteousness. He is the one who is just for all who are oppressed. Right? Now, He made known His ways to Moses. His acts to the children of Israel. That's what we can know about God. His ways. He didn't just bless Israel. Through the blessings, His ways were made known. Did you see it? Through His blessings, His acts were revealed. Did you see it? That is what was it supposed to be. Not just blessing upon blessing upon blessing upon blessing. And sometimes, you know, we, we take for granted. We have so much, we don't learn anything. We, we can. After a while, it's, it's just there. We can learn nothing. That is a scary thing. Right? So we want to be very, very careful. I mean, see, our children can be given. What do they learn from all those things that they are given? Young people can be given many things too. What do they learn? And the point is not just receive blessing upon blessing upon blessing. You learn something about the one who blessed you. Are we learning anything? Right? And look at this. His ways. His acts. What else do you learn? The Lord is merciful and gracious. That's what we have come to learn about God. He has been merciful. He has been so gracious. He is slow to anger, abounding in mercy. That is a wonderful God. I mean, if you compare this with people, a lot of people are quick to anger and short in mercy. It's the other way around. Isn't it? A little bit, why are you so angry? Why are you, you know, you're on the traffic light. You didn't go for half a millisecond when it changed green. They will thump the horn. Today, I was just driving and then um, I, I went past the bus. And I didn't see his signal. He was signaling, but I went past him. Maybe he was expecting me to give way. After all, he is a bus. And I just, I drove past. And he was, boom, 
on, he wanted to chase me. I imagine Transperf chasing you. <laughs> What's a one angry bus driver? I say, oh, sorry, sorry. This is called quick to anger. No mercy. <laughs> well, if he decides to <laughs> you know, sandwich me with, you know, he gets his bus friend and together sandwich me, I'm, I'm sunk. My Toyota Camry will be potato chips. <laughs> right? It will be cream. Then, you see, we don't realize God, he, he is so wonderfully there and we take him for granted. I read a terrible day's father, Father's Day card. It's terrible. But yet it hit, hit hard. Okay? This is a Father's Day card. In my family, I am like God. He says, Most of the time, I am ignored. When they need me, then they call to me. <sighs> this is the Father. <sighs> And, he's, and now he says, therefore, I am like God. Most of the time, ignored. Only when you are in serious trouble, maybe you got cancer. Oh, God, please, mercy, mercy. Help me, help me now. Right? Something goes wrong. Why are you, why are you like that? And so he says, I am like God. He, he knows nothing about God. And that's painful. Worse, equivalent, make it... That's what a father is. Right? And so we look at that. What are we learning? We must learn. This is wonderful things to learn. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in mercy. Now, let's go on further. He will not always strive with us. Right? That, that's a part. He will, keep his, he will not keep His anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. That is, you know, if He did that, we are all in serious trouble. Right? Okay? Now, let's go on. For as the heaven are high above the earth, so great is His mercy toward those who fear Him. So he really has learned to appreciate the mercy of God. I think that's true. As you go through life, what is the, the word that stands out? The word mercy. Right? How merciful, great is His mercy. As far as the east from the west, and then He says, He has removed our transgression from us. And then David will be one who has experienced this deeply. How precious it is to be truly forgiven. You know, you have people, you're, right? Uh, usually, the friends, they can tell you, right? You offend them. I forgive you, but I cannot forget it. This is forgiving and not forgetting. And every time you go past them, they eyeball you. <laughs> right? Again, okay, I forgive you, but I cannot forget it. Cannot. And sometimes it happens in the church. And that can be painful. Now, if it happens to God, oh, wow, we are all dead. He forgives you, but I cannot forget you. You, you know, there's only one heaven, you know. On earth, you can migrate to another country or you can change church. Not suggesting, but you can. But heaven, excuse me, is there another one? None. Every time you go past the gate, whoa, somebody's eyeballing you. You're in trouble. When the Lord forgives you, He forgives you. Think about that. Don't take that mercy for granted. Treasure it deeply. Now that's what, what it is over here. Look at that, right? Now, and then He goes on to say, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. Now, verse 14, he knows our frame. He remembers that we are, this is very humbling, thus. Right? And then we read. Look at, what is man? As for man, his days are like grass. What does that mean? He's as a flower of the field, he flourishes. The wind passes over it and it's gone. And its place remembers it no more. That is a very, very sobering thing to think about. How come man is compared to grass? 
right? Today there is grass, the lawnmower man come. Tomorrow, no grass. Huh? Here today, gone tomorrow. Yes. That's what happens at my house. It was just there. It's gone. How about the flower? Did you see our beautiful flowers outside? Right? Last week, more beautiful. Because I didn't know I had to water them. <laughs> and so when the landscaper came back and looked at it, he said, what happened? You had to water every day. At least every two days. They're dead. So he said, don't worry, I'll just put some more water and hopefully they come back to life. So I quickly assembled, we need a gardening team. <laughs> because if you're going to depend on me, this is going to be its fulfillment. The wind comes and it's gone. That's how fast flowers go. Grass too. But this is not a reference to flower or grass. This is a reference to life. We don't know how long we have. Just like grass. You could be here today. Tomorrow gone. Thank God you could celebrate with all of us our 25th anniversary. Our 26th, some of us may be here, some of us may be not. We never take that for granted. But when we have this perspective, when we have this perspective, every day becomes special. Every day, you know what? Thank God. What is the greatest of all blessings? Life. You still have life. Thank God. You may be unwell. You recovered. You know what? You have life. Look at all those blessings that just came up. It actually all has to do with life. Life spared from destruction. Right? You have life, but no good things. And then you suffer like everything, anything. What's the point? You, have, you can eat good things. You can be nourished. Now, Auntie Kaf is going to try and come and celebrate with us. At, uh, she's not here. I, rem but I remember when she was unwell. She did not eat for two months. She only could drink protein drinks. Doctor said, she's not going to make it. Now, I, I tried my hardest. I said, Kaf, you've got to try and eat something. Now, I don't mind driving one hour to Mandra just to get her to eat something. She couldn't eat. And said, so, well, I was all ready. Maybe the Lord will bring her home. One day when I went to see her in Mandra, she was up, sitting up, eating jelly. I was thrilled. How come? You can eat. I don't know. I get, just suddenly can eat. Suddenly, yes. And she has, now it's been about four years now since that incident. She is 102, so she'll be the oldest one going to West Inn. Uh, and and you know, she's planning to be there, God willing. If, if, and she says, look, I'm I, I hope to be there. And every time I see her, I always bring her coffee and chocolate. Right? Whatever it is. There's coffee, there's chocolate. Go ahead, eat. And eat you know, when you're that age, gain weight. Don't worry about it. Carry on. <laughs> right? It's only for all the young ones that are so concerned for their body. His one, I just please eat. You, you need it. You see, she says, she says to me, I, I don't eat to enjoy. I can't taste anything. I eat to survive. Literally to keep going. Because I can't, I, I'm not hungry. I'm never hungry. Of course, you don't do any sports. You don't do anything. You know, if you can eat, and if you have the health to have all these things, your life is not over. Please, bless the Lord with all your soul with all your heart. That is a very special blessing. And this is what the psalm is, is saying. That's why he brought it in. The focus of this text is not bless the Lord all my soul. It's actually here. Life. Look at this. The rest is a response. It's really a response. Now, right? That's the content the call to bless the Lord, the content to bless the Lord. Now, what's the challenge? This is this week. This is a challenge for... Now, how many group of people? Watch this. Okay, this is a challenge. Sound it out. Bless the Lord, you His angels. 
Now, who are the angels who excel in strength, who do His word, heeding the voice of His word? Now, I don't know whether David was talking to angels. But the word angels is simply the word messengers. These are servants of God. What do they do? They find strength and they do God's word and they heed God's word. They don't just preach God's word. 260, what what was that again? 600? I don't know what to do. It is not just preaching a message. The strength that is there. It is practicing it in your life. It is taking heed to it yourself. That is a messenger of God. The preaching is just part of it. But the most important part that God looks for in any of His servants who are His messengers is whether they practice it in their life. If you don't practice it in your life, what kind of messenger is that? Your message will fall flat. If you don't take heed to the message yourself, nothing comes out of it. Right? That's the messenger. Whether people will listen to the word of God or not, you will be there to proclaim it. Why? You are a messenger of the Lord. You will do it. You will heed it. The rest, if they hear these words, they are blessed. If they reject it, that's their loss. I remember when I was in Tasmania, we we rented a house, and it was an incredible place. But the most incredible thing was not the place. In the drawer was a Bible that was so big. Leather-bound from the 1900s. This is a handwritten Bible. The owner put it there, and he wrote these beautiful words. This, this property sets in beautiful Tasmania. You know, right in front was the ocean, and there was a private beach. This is like in the middle of nowhere. This is so beautiful. But to him, the most beautiful thing is this. Blessed are you. Blessed are the readers of this book. I forgot the rest. He said something really beautiful. But his whole point was this word. Now, I cannot take it. That would be called stealing. It would be very, really, really bad. The real angels would be very angry. Here's the pastor who just stole the Bible. How is he going to get away? It is. I literally wanted to find such a Bible you know, I, I called up antique shops, maybe, oh, shops in Tasmania. Maybe you, you have such Bible. No such thing. No such thing. We don't, we don't sell such thing. That's such a beautiful Bible uh, to, to, to own. And first, you, you, it's priceless. And he put it there as the most prized possession of everything. I don't know who the, the person is, but it is, is his regard and his love. You see, This is the same thing. A messenger of the Lord. You ask us what we prize most. What is the greatest blessing? Not health, nor wealth. This. The word. This. And we can, you know what? We can hear it. And we can do it. We can't hear it. We don't know what to do. We've got nothing. Bless the Lord. And this applies to me. Now, let's go on further. Bless the Lord, all he, you, His hosts. Now, that's a real challenging word. And this is because there are no army, no soldiers here. So this is not applied to you. Okay? But you ministers of His servants, those who are serving humbly wherever you are, and there's a lot of you this anniversary, right? The ushers, the traffic marshals, the people designing the booth, they have not been sleeping for the past two weeks. They are trying to present Bethel past, present, and future. And, you know, uh, Elijah and Meijie, the two architects, are trying to 
build a model of Bethel. Uh, I, I, it's uh, amazing. So they, uh, you don't see dark eye rings around their eyes like that. You know why? why. But there are people laboring hard, whether it's in the kitchen, right? Tonight's dinner, for example. Why do we do all this? Not to just make ourselves more busy. This is our way. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All you His servants. Now, His angels, His servants, ministers who do His pleasure. That's what it is. Who serves the Lord and desires to do so. Now, bless the Lord, all His works. That is amazing. This practically includes everybody else. Right? So if we look at the church, Bethel to us is a work of God. It's not just our work. This is why we take pride, we take joy in being, we count it a privilege and honor to be part of that work. And one day to leave it to the future, to the next generation. The one who is behind it does the work is God. We are His fellow workers. That's bless the Lord as a church. Bless the Lord as individual, as God works in your heart, in your life. Can you see that? From Just look back one year at the photographs. Has God begun a good work at you? If He has begun this work, he will continue to do so. And every year you see Him working. And that's exciting. It takes years. So it's taken for myself over, right? So Nick said I come, came back. Uh, when did I come back? <laughs> yeah, January. Yeah, I did come back in January. It was hot. That's all I remembered. In 2007, right? That's a few years ago now. Okay? And, and some of them remember when we all came back and we look at the church, we didn't even have a window. There was a missing piece of window there. I said, how come there was, the glass was so clear? Because there was no glass. <laughs> the church was still building. Well, we didn't have carpet. We didn't have a lot of things. Now we not only have window, we got blinds. Then recently, now we don't just have plants, we got trees. Did you see our trees planted in the house of the Lord? Hint, hint. Very symbolic. <laughs> thank God. Do you see it for yourself? You say, well, I can thank God. We see progress. You see work in progress. And it's continued work. And may it not end in 25 years. It's work in progress. What's it going to be like for the next 20 years? Some of us will be here. Some of us not going to be here. And some of you, I hear you say, by God's mercy, please don't let me be here. <laughs> right? But whatever it is, next 20 years, what would that work be like? Well, you know what? Bless the Lord, all His works. And that to me is absolutely exciting. When you are a worker, when you are involved, is very different celebration. Ask all who are serving when they celebrate an anniversary, when they are serving and they are involved, is a different kind of feel altogether. They understand what goes into it. They appreciate God's grace and mercy a lot. There is this a special joy that cannot just be, thank God. It cannot even be, praise God. The only fitting word is, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy day. With strength, we serve with strength. We sing with strength. And we thank God these are truly things that we can have. That we may know Him. That we may live this life meaningfully. And we can look back at life, it's not just compared to just grass and flowers. And that's it. I'm going to look back and say, you know what? That person was a person who blessed the Lord with all his heart. That's a life well lived. And may that, this life of ours be well lived. Okay? Well, we're going to pray together. 
and ask that the Lord will bless. Bless the anniversary that is coming up. And in our quiet moments, as we ready our own heart and our own mind, and to get ready. Okay, I, there will be testimonies, and, and we're just going through all the testimonies, uh, testimony booklet. Of all the testimony, I, I've just really, just really encouraged. They're all very encouraging, but I really like, I said to Joy, and I said, I really like your dad's testimony, Uncle Sadi's testimony. One is short, that's very easy to read. Two is so Uncle Sunny, and three, his first words were, my heart is pounding with excitement as we celebrate the anniversary. I, I, I like, I really appreciate it. But it comes from someone like him. He talks about his heart pounding. You know, when is the last time your heart pounded? Right? Maybe Uncle Sunny is when dating Auntie Mary that time. <laughs> this is the next time his heart pounded. Or maybe getting married. It's so good to have your heart pounding once again. Okay, may you pound. Right? That is really say, bless the Lord with all my pounding heart. Whatever. We understand you. We appreciate you too. Well, let's give thanks together. Our Father, we just thank you so much for the many who love you here. The many who love your work and have supported this work over so many years, 25 years, and is still here. We thank you for those who have joined us and they have been added and they have also joined in this work. And we are blessed by their commitment, by their serving, by their support. We bless your name for those who have flew in from overseas, from Bethany, and their love and support for us as a church. And they would make such special efforts too. May all this experience add to the joy we feel and the excitement to celebrate, to bless your name. And tonight, we just want to give thanks to you. We want to praise you. And more, we want to bless you with all our soul. And so we give thanks once again. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Well, we're going to sing one. I think having read this psalm, we cannot just read it, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and not sing the song, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. I think we should sing it too. Shall we? We sing and then we will conclude. We, we might as well say grace here, give thanks, and then we uh, go out and, and enjoy your dinner. Okay? All right? Well, let's rise. Well, let's give thanks together, shall we? Let's, let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you that we have been kept this year, that we still have life in us to serve you, to sing your praises, to bless you. May we treasure each day. And we treasure that we can belong to a church together, that we can understand better what it means to be your people in this context. Help us, Father, to real, really look forward to this week, the ACM as we come together, the worship on Thursday, the fellowship dinner with all our friends. Fill our hearts with that gladness. And life is just too short to have no gladness. And so we thank you for these experiences that we have to gladden our hearts that we may appreciate you even more. We ask that you would bless our fellowship over dinner together. We give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, well, thank you for being here. Look forward to worship tomorrow. Uh, enjoy the dinner outside. Okay, and uh, look forward to the week ahead.